If you're looking to release your game on the Google Play Store, this video will help you do exactly that. Walk you through each step, how to create an account, how to configure Unity so it will build correctly, so Google will accept it, and walk you through the steps to get the internal releases set up so you can set up things like in-app purchases and ads, as well as the steps to get the public releases working. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping you get your mobile game out the door and on the Google Play Store. This is something that I see a lot of posts about where people just are really confused about what do I do in Unity? What do I do on the Google Play side to get everything working together? So if you're feeling lost, you're not alone. In this video, we're gonna walk step-by-step step exactly what you need to do to get your mobile game onto the Google Play console and into the Google Play Store. There's chapters at the bottom of all of my videos, so you can jump to the section that you're having problems with, or you can just watch the whole thing and make sure that you understand the full process. What I'm not going to do in this video is talk about how to set up Unity ads or Unity in-app purchasing or your store page. What I will be doing is walking you through how to set up your developer account, which developer account should you pick, build your app correctly for the Google Play console, upload a build, create releases, and eventually publish those releases. Small disclaimer there is this is how it's working today with the current version, which is Unity 2021 and Unity 2022. Those are the LTS versions right now. And the Google Play console as it is at the beginning of 2023. Google recently did an update to the Google Play Console, maybe like in the last year or two, so most likely it's going to stay more or less this way for some time. With all that said, let's jump into creating our Google account. The first thing we have to do is make sure that we have a Google account that's hooked up in the Google Play Console. You can go to play.google.com slash console, click on go to play console, and either sign in with an existing Google account or create one here. Once you've signed in, it's gonna ask you which type of account you wanna create. If you're really serious, you should definitely have an organization. If you're doing this just for fun as just a hobby project, then you can use yourself. Making an organization requires that you do have a legal business entity, which is a little bit more expensive to get set up and has other things like you have to start paying taxes at a federal and state level if you're in the US. There's some setup fees and some other stuff that comes with that. So if that's too much and you don't care about doing all that right now, you choose yourself. If you already have your own organization, then you can just use your organization. The difference here is it's going to ask for identifiable information about the organization or personally identifiable information about yourself. We're going to pick myself here. On the first page, it's just information about you. That's why it's called about you. You can fill out as much or as little as you want to do here. The next page, the key piece is the developer account name. This is what's going to be shown whenever you publish your app as who made this game. So make sure it's on brand for whatever you want to have as your publisher profile. Before you can proceed off this page, you do have to verify your email and phone. So you're not going to want to provide bogus information here. The second to last page is about the apps. They're just trying to get a feel for what do you know right now. Fill this out to the best of your information. Some of this, like the app categories, can be changed later once you get into the Google Play Console. You have to accept some terms, so make sure to read those and click I understand. Then you can click the create account and pay. Then you have to pay $25, which is a one-time fee for your account. which is very different from the Apple one, which is an annual fee of $100. So if you later want to create an organization, you can transfer the apps that you created from the personal account over to that organizational account, and you just have to pay the additional $25 for that second organization account. Now that we have a developer account, how do we get our Unity game into the Google Play console so we can publish internal releases to test the end and delivery through the Google Play console? Step two in our process here is within Unity, we want to make sure that we have the Android build target already selected. If you just created your project and started going to town doing whatever you need to do for your project, it's probably on standalone build, not the Android one. I hope you already have Android selected, but if not, in the Unity hub, you can go to installs, select your current install, click add modules, and add the Android build support, including the Android SDK, NDK tools, and open JDK. If you don't install all of this and let Unity kind of manage all of that itself, then it can be a little bit painful to get it to use the right tools. Once that's installed in the Unity editor itself, you might have to restart it. You're gonna to wanna to go to your build settings, which is file, 
build settings and make sure you select Android and then click switch platform. Switching platform can take a while depending on how big your assets folder is, how many assets you have in there, textures, audio files, 3D models, all that kind of stuff. Once you've switched platform successfully and you're still on the build settings, go ahead and tick this box, build app bundle Google Play. A while ago, Google made it where you can't submit APKs or they're like not as well supported. So you're gonna wanna click this to use in what's called an AAB instead of an APK. And that's what the Google Play console is gonna want you to submit. Everything else on the build settings we can leave alone. If you did have to switch platforms, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all your shaders still compiled properly, like run your game and play it and make sure everything still looks okay. There's a lot of incompatibilities between the platforms, so you need to just make sure everything's working okay and address any of those issues. Let's jump over to the project settings to look at what else you need to do over here. And let's start at the bottom with what's called the publishing settings. And here you'll see something called Key Store Manager. You're gonna to wanna to click that, create a new key store, you can say in dedicated location and place it somewhere that's secure. If somebody gets a hold of this, they can start publishing basically under your profile. It's not good. So once you have this, keep it secret, keep it secure. Don't share it with people who shouldn't have it. Provide a password, confirm the password, give an alias. I just call it signing usually. Give that alias a password as well. Then provide your first and last name, organizational unit, organization, city or locality, state, province, and country code. Unity has some documentation about what each of these means. Pretty self-explanatory organizational units is kind of the weird one. You can put something like game development here or something. And then say add key. Then under project key store, you can click custom key store and select this one. Make sure you have the password filled out. Now, every time you build, you're gonna to wanna to use this key store and make sure that password is provided. If you close the Unity editor and you bring it back up, it's gonna complain whenever you try to build that you didn't provide the password and you're gonna to have to come over here and fill it in again. This is different and if you've been building before already on the Android platform and you didn't have custom key store, Unity was using a debug key store. And if you built the app only using that, using the default one that Unity is gonna sign it with, Google can tell that that's like a debug key store and it won't let you publish the build with that. That's why we have to make our own custom one here signed by us. For the time being, you can leave everything else there alone and we can come into the other settings. A couple of really important notes here is under identification, you're gonna to wanna to start maintaining this version and this bundle version code. You cannot submit two builds with the same version and bundle version code. If you do, it will complain at you and tell you, hey, this already exists and you have a slow internet connection and you're uploading like 200 meg AAB file. That's really annoying because it doesn't tell you until after you've uploaded everything just to find out that you forgot to increment this. One of my very first videos actually was to automatically increment this build version code. So every time you actually do a build, it will increment this value. So you never run into that problem on any platform. I got a link to that video in the description and a card on the screen right now. The other two things right here in identification are minimum API level and target API level. Right now, 33 is the most recent one, but depending on when you watch this, it'll change and Google's requirements will change as well that you have a minimum API and a target API level of X. Now that you're a developer account, you'll get emails periodically from them telling you, hey, you need to upgrade and start targeting version Y. It's usually around the time that the new Android comes out, they'll tell you you need to start using that newest version, which is for any new updates. Any existing ones can stay as they are, but anytime you push a new update, they'll tell you you have to start targeting the newest version. If we go down just a little bit from there to configuration, most likely your scripting backend was set to mono. That results in a lot faster build times and is a little bit easier for you to work with and debug. You cannot submit builds to Google Play, at least that'll be released, that use the mono backend. So go ahead, change the scripting backend to IL2CPP, make sure the C++ compiler configuration is released. And for the target architectures, ARMv7 is really not supported on Google Play anymore. You need to build the 64-bit one. So go ahead and check that one as well. We scroll down a little bit more and find managed stripping level. We wanna set that to minimal. Later on, you can play with this to reduce your build size further, but it can also introduce some weird issues into your game. So I recommend you start with minimal and then work your way up later when you're working on the optimization of your build size. That's the last really important thing. Now go ahead and build your app for this Google bundle. You'll make an AAB file and it'll probably take longer than you've normally dealt with it building because it's now going to do the IL2 CPP thing, which converts your C sharp code into C++ code basically. Once that's built, we can go back to our Google Play console. There's really two things that we want to talk about here. One is how do you get this up and running as quickly as possible so you can have things like IAP, which require that you have your bundle on the Google Play console so you can start adding in that purchase items. It requires you have at least one build there already. We're gonna do that first. And the second one is how can I start working towards a production release? Cause these are a little bit different. 
If you don't already have an app created, you can click Create App, fill out the app name, default language as English, choose that's a game, and select either free or paid. If you make it paid, you can later change it to be free, but if you make it free, you cannot later change it to be paid. You need to agree to these two declarations, and then you can click Create App. To just get up and running as quickly as possible in the Google Play Console, go to Release, Testing, Internal Testing, Create Release, and then upload your AAB. Get a version like 0.0.1, .0 something like that for the name. And the internal testing is exactly that, it's for internal. So they have a little bit less requirements about what you have to do to make this work and go. And you can kind of skip some of the safety checks that if you're gonna actually put it on the Google Play Console that they would normally run. Once you click review release, you'll probably see an error relating to advertising ID or something like that. Since we're targeting API level 33, we have to at least declare that we are or are not tracking the user. If you are, you need to make sure you fill out this form properly, reporting everything that you do use for tracking. If you're not, you can just say no. Since this is the internal track, we can skip that and say, yeah, don't worry about it and proceed. You can create that release and now you have a build on the Google Play Console you can start working with the IAP setup for. Now, if you want to do a real release, usually you want to start with closed testing. So you can use the alpha track that exists or you can create your own like closed testing private, something like that. And you're basically going to follow the exact same process. Since you've already uploaded an AAB, we can select it from our library. You're going to give it a name, give it some release notes, click review, and then see some errors. If this is your first build ever, you're going to see probably several errors if you haven't gone through the Google Play Console and set up everything already. I got like eight online, right? What I'm going to do, let's just skip the first one since it says go to dashboard, go to government apps. This is not developed on behalf of government. Say yes if you are. Done. Back to closed testing. Only seven errors remain. Go to privacy policy. If you're not tracking the user or collecting any information about the user, you probably can have a very simple privacy policy. If you're targeting children under 13, you need to follow the guidelines they gave you here at the user data policy, and Google has more information about what should you put into a privacy policy. So you do want to make sure that this is really accurate and reflects what you're actually doing. You can go to ads and say, yes, mine does or doesn't. If you have some restricted access, you need to have some test accounts that Google can use to validate all those areas of your app. If you do not have anything restricted where you need like a special account or something like that, you can just say all functionality is available without special access. So this is because Google does play your game and checks out some stuff, make sure it works and that just not some like horrible performance. So you do need to provide them instructions on how to access those accounts if you have some restricted functionality. Next step is the content rating. Answer all of these questions honestly. My app has none of these right now because it's literally just a menu and they'll give you some kind of rating. If you answer those incorrectly, they will pull your app off from the Google Play Store. So make sure you really review all of those and answer them honestly. If something changes, you can always submit a new questionnaire and update these ratings. Target age, make sure you answer this honestly. Who is your target demographic? You need to specify whether you're a news app or not, which most likely if you're a game, you're not. If you track stuff about COVID, you can say, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. Again, most likely for your game, you're not. Next, this one about data safety is very important and it's relatively new on the Google Play Console. Make sure you read through this and fill it out accurately. If you do not collect anything, it's very short. You just say no and you're done. If you have Unity ads, probably are collecting some information even if you're not aware of it. So make sure you review what does Unity ads collect and make sure you answer this appropriately. Now that I've submitted all of those, let's check out the closed testing. We'll see almost all of these are resolved. Go back to the dashboard. You'll see that here we have nine of 11 steps complete. So let's just go ahead and do those last two here. Select your app category. You're gonna to wanna to fill all of this out accurately with real data. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have all of that and you fill it out and provide that in these fields. Same here on the descriptions, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have 
a real description, a real app name, because whatever you display here is gonna be exactly what's shown on the Google Play Store. You also have to provide some graphics, so make sure you spend some time creating all of these things. We'll see that one of those sections is completed, so we can go down to release my app, select countries and regions, Down here at the bottom where we have countries and regions, we can click add countries regions. You can select all of them or target specific countries based on the language they speak and how you've internationalized and added translations for your game. If we click edit release now, review and release, and we'll see that now I can start roll out to close testing. Because it's gonna be published on the Google Play Store, it does get reviewed by Google in some capacity. And usually the way I do this is I'll start with something in closed testing where only I have access to download it, so I can run this on a couple of different phones, make sure it's running correctly, there's no weird IL-2 CPP conversion errors, make sure there's no weird random build errors, and once I've successfully done that, I can promote it into open testing or full production. That seemed like it was a lot, right? There's quite a few steps to get it up and running in the first pass. Once you have that first release done, subsequent releases are much easier. It's just a matter of incrementing that build, which I have that video about how you can automatically do so you don't have to ever worry about it. Create a new release, upload that new built AAB, and click roll out release. Google will do a little validation on your AAB. Maybe they'll run it, maybe not. Once that's approved, you can start rolling it out to the next tier. So once you've set up everything, it's really fast to create the next releases. It's just the initial setup that there's a lot of steps, a lot of room to make errors, and a little bit time consuming to do as well. You're gonna to wanna to take this and iterate and refine your store page before you do that full release. These are just the minimal steps required to get your build up and running on the Google Play console. There's a lot more things you can do in here, like setting up in-app purchases, making sure your ads are properly configured, and doing things like App Store Optimization, which sometimes you'll hear people just say ASO for App Store Optimization. Depending on when you're watching this, I might have another video with a card on the screen and at the end screen where we'll look at some of those topics. But before we get to that end screen, make sure you've liked and subscribed to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every tutorial Tuesday. And if you wanna support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, get your name up here on the screen, get a boy shout out starting at the awesome tier, Speaking of those awesome supporters, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Rulin, and Paul Berry, and Ify Obelis. And at the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen and Andrew Albright. Thank you all for your support. I am incredibly grateful.